Hey everybody, hey everybody. Um, another sad night, another sad night for basketball, another sad, sad night, excuse me, for the NBA. Uh, we had two more big injuries. Just seems like it's been an entire season of, uh, of crazy injuries. Back to back to back in the league. Um, tonight, of course, the, uh, the big one over here on this channel is Danny Avdia, uh, season ending hairline ankle fracture sources tell, uh, Woj. That's the big one tonight. Um, Danny, obviously someone who I, I wouldn't be where I am today without him, without him or Paige, um, both of those players really just they they uh they they really propelled me to that next level and you know the the whole country of Israel and um you know they they all just supported me they all just supported me and um supported me from the jump Danny's always been one of my favorite players from the jump uh out of this past draft and stuff like that and uh you know even though he he wasn't he hasn't been scoring as much you know lately I know he had the 16 point game about a week and a half ago, two weeks ago, and uh, I reacted to that one. But you know, even though he hasn't been scoring, it's been six points, six points, six points. Russell Westbrook has really stepped up for that team and doing what he has to do to get those guys in the playing uh, tournament in the Eastern Conference. So, you know, while while the team was going up, and then I did see some of the plays he was making. Like I saw he he threw like a, a nice alley oop pass to uh, to Russ. I believe it might have been Sacramento. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but yeah, um, just a tough situation, man. Tough situation to see Danny go down like that. You know, uh, obviously, you know, we could probably go a little more in depth about his rookie season, but just kind of on a surface level, you think back to to how it uh, went. Had a hot start in the preseason, had a decent start uh, kind of in the regular season. Then he had COVID. Or he dealt with the COVID protocol. Say they weren't like specific with what he was dealing with. Uh, he was out for a little bit there at the end of December, early January. Gets back into the lineup, and then once he gets back, it was kind of slow from there uh, because you know uh, I think Brad Bill was you know taking a billion shots. He had that sixty point game where they lost in Philly. I remember and stuff like that. So and then Russ was taking a bunch of shots too. So I did that All Star break video. You go up to February where I was like, oh, don't worry about Danny because Danny's only taking this amount of shots and a team can only get this amount of shots in a game and stuff like that. And any time you play with two guys like that, it's going to be tough for everybody else, especially when a guy like Rui has kind of already uh, established himself being there a little longer as that other guy, you know what I'm saying, uh, or another option, one of the top options of the other guys, if you will. So, um, you know, I did that video. Then he comes back from from our uh, from All Star, and it's kind of more of the same of what he was like right after he came back from COVID. But he did have a couple of good nights, like I said, uh, the double double, and then the sixteen point game. So you know he, you know, he's shown that he believe he belongs in this league. Uh, definitely isn't someone who uh, has shown that that he was outmatched or not ready for the league or kind of rushed into it. And, you know, that, that just goes to the overall point of kind of this video, uh, which is, you know, in New York, the game that I was watching live. Uh, if you guys don't know, I, I watched the Hawks live and everything like that. I mentioned it a lot on the channel, but we got some new viewers and stuff like that. But over there in New York, in Madison Square Garden, Trey Young goes down with it looked like a, an ankle injury right there. Um, and you talk about one of the teams hit hardest by injuries, you know, the Hawks are definitely up there. They're missing Cam Reddish, DeAndre Hunter, Tony Snell, Chris Dunn hasn't played all season. Um, who's who's another one? Uh, DeAndre Hunter, Cam Reddish, Tony Snell, uh, Danilo Gallinari, Chris Dunn. Uh, th those are just five guys that I could think of right now. But that's that's a whole five, you know, rotation right there. That That's an entire lineup right there of players. And then, you know, uh, your star player goes down tonight. And then a couple minutes later, Clint Capella goes down with the bat back. And Nate McMillan decides to keep him in the game because the Hawks are so close to winning that game. So he decides to keep uh, McMillan. He decides to keep Capella in there in, at the end of the game. Didn't really work out. Collins, he was just coming back from injury. So he was on minutes restriction. 
Just didn't work out for the Hawks. Uh, they ran out of gas and lost in overtime. Baldanovich, uh, bogey, had, had a pretty good game offensively and had some big plays stepped up down late, uh, down there late in the game and stuff like that. Kevin Herter stepped up in the absence of those other wing players that I just mentioned and everything like that. It's just been a tough break. Tough break for everybody because, you know, you go beyond the Hawks and, and the two big injuries from tonight with, with Danny and Trey Young, and, and you look at uh, Brooklyn. Brooklyn hasn't had their entire team out there this season. You look at L.A. with Brian and A.D. out. You look at uh, Denver with Jamal Murray. You look at Utah. Utah is getting it going, and then something happens to Donovan Mitchell. You know, it, it's just it's, it's all around the league now, and everybody knows what, what the case is. It's kind of a rough season, little to no rest, and then just with – all the COVID protocols and stuff like that. There's not many practices. It's a lot of travel, a lot of wearing your mask. And um, that's why, you know, they kind of had the incentive of if you get the vaccine, we'll ease up the, the restrictions. So the guys, a lot of the guys are like, I'm getting a vaccine because, you know, like it's like, you know, going from city to city. You got to stay in your hotel room. You got to wake up first thing in the morning, get COVID tested every single morning. Excuse me. Uh, during the season. Not many practices. Like I said, J.J. Reddick said that this has been the most mentally taxing season of his career. And J.J.'s been in the league since the 2007 draft, uh, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. That might have been 2006. Might have been. Yeah, it was 2006 because 2006 was Morrison. So J.J. came out with Morrison. I just remember he was in uh, his first game was NBA Live 2007. He was a rookie in that game. I remember that. It, that was like one of the first years that uh, NBA Live had the superstar feature. Anyway, I'm going off on a little tangent there. But um, yeah, man, JJ said it there. And that was something that, that I just always kind of remember and kind of always refer back to when I think about this season. And just like, um, it's just it's just tragic, man. It's just tragic. I, I really think that this, I, I said it before, but this season is really the most open the NBA is probably ha has been and will be for in the last 10 years, like since the, the lockout season. So, um, you know, the title's up for grabs. Anyone can win it this year because it's simply going to come down to whose star players are healthy and who has the most available bodies once playoff time comes in June and July because, you know, that that's when the playoffs are this year in June, July, and then they're turning around to do it all over again in November. Things just off. Uh, I think they probably should have shortened the season or delayed the season even longer, uh, maybe to the start of January. I loved it personally, you know, as a fan consuming because it was like little to no off season. But uh, for those players, you you know, we're seeing the effects of it now. And it's just, um you know... I don't know the word for it. I guess deteriorating, deteriorating, deter deteriorating the quality of play out there. So it's unfortunate for the NBA. Uh, just unfortunate, man. You, you think about, you know, Embiid. Embiid was in the uh, MVP race and Embiid goes down and people are like, oh, not Embiid. And he comes back. But it's a lot of guys this season who have just been in and out and in and out and in and out and hurt for long periods of time out for the season and it's just uh it's just been tough. It's just been tough. Everybody's been banged up. And people say that every year, but this year is truly holds true. CJ McCollum, I think about Portland out there. Uh in January, he was out for like an entire like month and a half or two months. So, you know, all these guys are going through the injuries. Uh Memphis with Jaron Jackson Jr. I don't know if that Joker's played like all season, you know, and they say that he's coming easing back in, into uh, you know, he's closer to a return and stuff like that, but it's just crazy, man. It's crazy. Uh Luca, I'm pretty sure Dallas has dealt with with a lot of injuries this year. With KP and KP hasn't had the best season either. It's just been a really, really tough season and um you know, I don't even know what to say, man. It's just, you just, you just hope the best for all these guys. And uh, yeah, yeah, I, I just wanted to point that out because, you know, I was watching Hawks game live and, and I was planning on, you know, Steph's been hot lately. Uh, and then, you know, with uh, Steph has been hot lately and so is Russ. And then, you know, Danny's in the game. So I was like, okay, I'm keeping my eye out on that as a potential thing to react to tonight. But, you know. Uh, with that news with Danny, plus the 
uh, you know, the injury I just saw with Trey and Capella. And then, yeah, the Knicks. The Knicks also had, like, they had Mitchell Robinson now, and then they also lost uh, Taj Gibson in that game, you know? So just with those injuries that I saw. Oh, the, the kid from um uh, the Golden State. I was about to say San Francisco. Kid from Golden State. I believe his name is Juan. He had, like, 37 stitches in his head from an injury the other night. These kids are going out. You think about Houston, right? Houston a couple months ago where John Wall was out and uh, DeMarcus Cousin was out and, you know, they, they had the, you know, <laughs> KPJ was like the MVP of the G League bubble and he had to be their star player the same week because they didn't have enough bodies to even play. It's just been a crazy season, man. Crazy season. The whole Kerry Le- uh, Karis LeVert thing with, with the trade and, you know, seeing that and he had to kind of be eased back into it just because he saw that he had a heart condition, a real life threatening thing. So it's just been a tough season with injuries and, um, you know, I don't know. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? Let let me know if you think that this is all on Adam Silver. He did he rush it? Uh, is it was he was he wrong for trying to force eighty two games in? Um, you know, obviously with the kind of the rollout of vaccines happening closer to the second half of the season, do you think that maybe they they could have kind of like. I guess even just relax the schedule a little bit. Because, you know, like me with having to watch the Hawks every game, it's um, it's like every game. It's like every day, every other day, at least. It's a back-to-back at least once a week, at least once a week a back-to-back. And, uh, and then if it's not a back-to-back, it's every other day. Like they had two days off this past weekend, and that was the first time they had two days off in – I don't even remember when. They're playing like a baseball schedule right now. It's, it's just ridiculous to think that, you know, we're trying to squeeze this season in. And I get it. Like, you're going to have to have a sacrifice season to get back to normal, quote unquote, whenever normal can happen again, if normal ever returns. But it's just weird, man. It's just weird. Like, but money rules all. TV contracts are TV contracts. You still got to do all those things. So I don't know, man. It's tough. It's tough. It's tough. I, I, I don't know what the answers are. We're all in this uh, panini all together. So um, we all got to try to figure it out, dude. And uh, it's just weird. It's just weird, bro. So that's it. That was it. Um, Danny fans, I'm sorry. Uh, but but like I said, uh, I appreciate the ride. I appreciate everything. Uh, thank you for all the support. Denix, Denix, Denix. Thank you for, uh, for all my commenters and everything like that. Y'all my dogs, for real. Um, Danny, tough rookie season. Tough rookie season. And then you think about the other rookies, too. I'm thinking about the other rookies. Like, it's just, oh, LaMelo. That's, I was like, who is a rookie that is, like, a big affected by this? But, you know, you think about all the rookies. Like, you know, like I said, I'm watching the Hawks. So, uh, Anyeka Nkambu, big O. Like, he's had kind of, like, a bit trouble kind of getting adjusted because he started the season off with an injury and then once he got back in it was kind of like you know the Hawks are contenders so he kind of has to play a reserve role and when he comes in if he's not contributing expeditiously immediately which you know is very difficult for Ricky Biggs to do you know he gets taken out so he never got a chance to develop his confidence and his rhythm and he's starting to get a little more playing time now but he's still figuring it out on the NBA level and uh, you know his high school teammate LaMelo Ball there in Charlotte Hurt his hand. He was originally ruled out for the season. Now he's expected to come back right before playoffs are, I think, seven to ten days because his cast is off and he's, you know, clear for basketball activities again. So it's just been what the heck is going on? I don't know. I don't know, man. Chris Dunn was supposed to be back like a month ago, according to the Hawks, and he's still not back. You know, he's practicing with the team and he's dunking the ball, but he's still not back. I don't know what the heck is going on around the league. So. Uh, Steph being out and in and out and stuff like that. And obviously he's killing when he's playing, but you know, but Brooklyn going back to Brooklyn with Harden's out or KD's out, Kyrie's out, um, you know, Blake's out. And then LaMarcus Aldridge finds out he has a heart condition and he has to retire. Like it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. But, um, you know, it's been a tough year, bro. It's been a tough year. Like, like we tried to mask it up. It's kind of like, you know, um, like getting beat up, right? Getting beat up. 
and then trying to put like makeup on it and then like smiling in a in, in a class picture. You got like a chip too, and I got you can really open your eyes and you got makeup all on your face and you're like. That's literally this NBA season and basketball and the sports world in general in this Panini, in this Panasonic. That is like the entire thing of this. Probably shouldn't be playing sports right now, but like it's bringing us joy. Like, so salute to all the athletes. You know what I'm saying? I know it's an outlet for them, but it's giving us entertainment and distractions, you know, because we obviously know what's going on outside there. I remember last year when I really started doing this. I always close every video with like, I hope this was a beautiful distraction for what's going on outside the door. And dang, when actual games came back, I got distracted so much, I stopped saying it. Because I'm like thinking everything's back to normal. You know, like I'm going back to work like normal. You know, I'm watching games like normal. Um, here in the South, none of these jokers wear masks. You know, I wear my mask, but none of these jokers wear masks and they don't believe in masks and they get offended when you wear a mask around them. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's crazy. It's crazy. It's like it's not reality down here. So, uh, I don't know, man. Like, I like I forgot. I forgot for a second. And even with uh, yesterday's transgressions of, of what happened in you know America, um, that that was kind of like a, a kind of a reminder of like, dang, like this is what we're in the middle of. We're, we're living in history, and we. I forget it. I forget it. You know because it's easy to forget when. You have games to watch every night, which was goes back to the point of Kyrie talking about going into the bubble. I wonder what Kyrie's stance is on like playing now, and you know, just because like that kind of just exemplified it right there, like just in real time. And I'm sorry, I'm going everywhere right now around the world, but or around America, I'm sorry, but I mean that's just like kind of the thing. Like it's it's crazy, it's crazy right now, and you know, having to watch games every night for the past few months has distracted me from the fact that stuff is still very much crazy right now. And uh, whew, it's heavy, it's heavy. So so before I get too heavy on here and get too dark, if you made it all the way to this part of the video, I appreciate you so much. You are a great person and you're gonna do great things and I believe in you. If no one has told you today, I believe in you, all right? Keep your heads up, I appreciate all the support. This is The Road to 2K Subs if you are new to the channel. I'm sorry, this wasn't the analytical numbers base. And this was just my initial raw thoughts and reaction. Danny got hurt tonight. I didn't really want to do a full statistical breakdown of his rookie season, like kind of in a rush manner. Uh, so, but I did think that it would be responsible and the right thing to do if I at least uploaded something tonight to um, acknowledge uh, that that major event to someone who has meant so much to me in this channel and to you all uh, discovering me through this channel. So, yeah, man, shout out to Israel. Uh, shout out to Trey. Shout out Jamal Murray, Don Donovan Mitchell. All y'all young boys, LaMelo, Chris Dunn, everybody going through the injuries. LeBron, AD, all y'all going, Jaron Jackson Jr., all y'all going through the injuries right now, man. Pray your hands up. You know, I appreciate all y'all, man, for... Um, Laying y'all bodies out there and risking your health for the sake of America's entertainment um, and the world's entertainment. But, ah, uh, it's tough, man. It's tough. Uh, this is the world of 2K subs, man. And if that wasn't motivation for you, if that, if that, hey, if that, what, what I just did right there, if that wasn't enough motivation for you to, to uh, continue to be safe because we're not out of this thing yet, then I don't know what we'll be. All right, man. Take care of yourself. Yeah. <sighs>